Hey guys, Ramsey here. Welcome to another video. Today we've got a This Is Not A Top 10 and I've been working on this one for a while. Um, we are going to do a green This Is Not A Top 10, but specific green This Is Not A Top 10 video. It's going to be on uh, notes like pine, pine needles, balsam fir, hemlock fir, uh, ivy, cannabis, stone pine needles, stuff like that. So I'm specifically leaving out, art, um, you know, galbanum, artemisia, not to say there's not galbanum, artemisia, or basil in these fragrances, but uh, we're going to highlight some that really um, spotlight the note of pine or balsam fir, stone pine needles, ivy, cannabis really well. That's the idea with this, perf with this uh, video. And since the weather is starting to turn today, it's September 11th, and it is the start of football season, even though my Raiders lost. Um, I'm doing this video to make me feel a little bit better. I'm used to losing. You know, it's been 22 years or whatever, 23 years since the last time we were in a Super Bowl. And, um, you know, I keep thinking every year it's going to change. And, and it's a it's it's tough year in and year out. Uh, but that's what happens when you're a fan. That's what happens when you're a loyal fan. And, uh, you know, it is just a game in the end, but still it is, it is much more fun when your team that you support is winning. Um, so that being said, the start of football season, the reason I brought that up, number one, I'm wearing the Jersey, but number two is, um, it's starting to cool off just a bit. I can just feel, you know, just barely the weather changing a bit when I run at night. It's just a tad cooler today during the day. It wasn't, you know, uh, 98, 100 degrees here in Texas, and so I'm so happy that the dog days of summer are over with. So what I wore today in honor of, I'm going to give myself a fresh spritz because I love this fragrance so much, one of my favorite fragrances of all time, um, and I wore it in honor of Mr. Al Davis, who used to own the Raiders. This was one of, this was his signature scent. This is Antaeus. Now, this version of Antaeus that I have, um, is the sport cologne version which came out in uh, 1985 sorry i'm trying to get the fingerprints off for you so the original antaeus was released in 81 the sport cologne version was released in 85 and it got discontinued in 86 for whatever reason it opens up with some peppermint artemisia lemon and um, they added some things and they took some things away they took out the myrrh and they added something, uh, they added this vetiver-like touch. But because they removed that resinous myrrh, they kept the rose, um, it almost makes the castorium in here feel even more prominent. It's absolutely crazy. It's my favorite sport fragrance of all time. And so I wore this in honor of Mr. Al Davis, who owned the Raiders for many years, my favorite American football team. I know you people overseas are going to say football. You're thinking soccer, American football. Um, and so... Yes, that's what I wore today, and I loved every second of it. It is This can easily be a signature scent for me. Absolutely easily. I'm so glad I've got 100 mil bottles. Oh, man, it is just stunning. One of the best castorium fragrances in my collection maybe ever made. Okay, so let's get into this. Let's do samples first. I want to talk about an Arige Ladore. He isn't known for um, green you know, piney scents necessarily. He's known for his use of real oud, real musks, real ambergris, you know, stuff like that. But this fragrance has real musk in it, but it also has an absolutely beautiful Siberian stone pine note. It feels like you're in the forest, you know, with the deer. Now, the deer musk is the star of the show. There's other things going on um, and there's also some cypress, which is a, I'll do a separate, this is not a top 10 video on cypress one day, because I think that the note of cypress is heavily underused and underutilized in men's fragrances or fragrances in general. I love the note of cypress and it's, um, you don't see it used as often as I thought, you know, maybe you would. So this fragrance is called Siberian Musk 2. Now, I also was sent a sample of the original Siberian Musk, and I think I did a comparison video, and I'll tell you what, one and two uh, are both fantastic. It wouldn't matter to me which one I could find. I would love a bottle of this stuff. I think this is probably my favorite Musk fragrance uh, that I've ever smelled, just because it captures that uh, deer musk in a way that is just so perfect for me. It's just, you know, it almost smells like you can... 
you can smell the furriness of the deer's coat. You can smell what the deer ate. You know, musk is used as a um, way to mark territory by the deer and as a way to attract a mate sexually. And you get some of that. You get some of that, you know, um, furry, underlying, animalic vibe. Um, and it's absolutely beautiful. And then you add in those green stone pine needles with the uh, oud in the base and the cypress and the patchouli. And it's just stunning. Um, absolute stunning scent. One of the early Ariza Dory videos that I did, uh, and it really opened my eyes to the brand. So that's the first one. The second one is going to be a fragrance I plan on doing a video on very soon. I'm going to wear this as my scent of the day uh, very soon, uh, probably within the next month or so. And it has, a, it has one of the best cannabis notes I've ever smelled, and it's called Blackbird. And Blackbird is by the house of Matriarch. Uh, the House of Matriarch is a natural perfume brand. I think her fragrances are like 99% natural or something. Very small use of synthetics. And it's leathery. It's resinous. It has a couple strange green notes. I mentioned cannabis. It also has a note of kelp, which is a very weird note in perfumery. So it has this coniferous woods, kelp, white sage, black leather, real ambergris, and an animalic note of real hyracium in here, hyrax. Very um, hard note to use for a perfumer because uh, it's very hard to dose and it's very easy to use too much. And the Western nose is not used to hyrax. You know, they're starting to smell, um, you know, other things in fragrances that <clears throat> are maybe not as uh, common or interesting. But hyrax is one of those where it's very hard to use proper and here it's used beautifully so I'll do a video on it very soon um, okay next we're gonna go to um, one of my favorite niche houses and one of the houses that I think is an absolute banger as far as value for money goes I don't think you can do much better in the value for money department than this house it's from the house of Papillon all right Papillon artisan perfumers and the fragrance is called Spell 125. And Spell 125 is a, um, Spell 125, uh, there's a whole backstory on it. Liz Moore has talked a little bit about it in the interview that I did with her. Go watch that if you haven't watched it. You know, I did, I have an entire playlist dedicated to the interviews with Russian Adam and Liz Moore. They're probably the most, uh, resourceful and insightful things on my channel, in my opinion. Uh, but Liz Moore has talked a little bit about her, her fragrances, and this one in particular, someone asked her which fragrance uses the most ambergris, and she said, oh, easy, because she uses real ambergris by far. She said, Spell 125, um, and Spell 125 is this white ambergris with Siberian stone pine and hemlock fir, so you get the double uh, green notes. Omani green frankincense, triple right, green notes basically, because that uh, frankincense here smells very green with ylang ylang and Indian sandalwood. And this is absolutely beautiful. I don't think I'll be getting a full bottle of this, um, but I will do a video on it very soon and, and talk some more about it. Um, it's a beautiful composition, as are most of her fragrances. Very well done. Uh, and then we are going to talk about a... Um, fragrance that doesn't get very much talk in the community. In fact, almost no talk in the community. Uh, came out in 2013, and it's from the house of uh, Nila Vermeer Creations. All right, there's the brand's logo. And this fragrance is called Ashoka. Now, Ashoka is nine years old. So it uh, came out in 2013. It was created by the master perfumer Bertrand Duchafour. So I've got... Um, I've got two of these. I think these are uh, 15 mils. Yeah, these are 15 mils. So I have two of these. I got this from Lucky Scent. You get a two pack when you buy the um, when you buy the uh, 15 mil um, Discovery atomizers. And the reason that this made the video is it has a couple of very strange green notes in it. So um, number one, it has a note of parsley, which I know is not something I list initially in the video, but I wanted to include this one because the parsley mix, mixes with the fig leaf in the opening. And it's a very 
lactonic, milky experience when you wear this. There's lots of beautiful florals. Um, you get all kind of flowers in here. The iris stands out. It's absolutely beautiful. You get Osmanthus Absolute, Rose, Water Hyacinth, Lotus, uh, Jasmine Sambach, Geranium, Ylang Ylang. Very um, artistic fragrance from Bertrand du Chiffour. Um, and the base has this Fir Balsam Absolute. So you get some green notes in the top, like I mentioned, the parsley and the fig. The base then has the uh, fir balsam absolute. The mid has this milky, uh, I think there's even fig milk. So you get fig leaf in the top, fig mil milk in the mid, and then you get the fir balsam absolute in the base with the resins and the vanilla and ambergris and all the other stuff that Bertrand du Chaffour uses so well. This is just an amazing fragrance no one talks about. Um, I think it deserves much more love in the community. So I'll talk about that on my channel soon. Um, and then we want to go to some of the full bottles. Okay, so we're going to go to, in my opinion, one of the best cannabis fragrances. I already mentioned one, the Blackbird from the House of Matriarch. Uh, this one is probably more well-known. When you talk about cannabis fragrances, uh, this is usually what comes to mind. Even though this house doesn't release notes, um, I think it's pretty well agreed upon that there is cannabis in this in this fragrance. Uh, and it's called Nasomato Black Afghano. Actually, the name Black Afghano refers to a type of cannabis in and of itself. Um, and this is ca green cannabis with a lot of resins, dark, woody notes, tobacco, coffee, incense, oud. It's absolutely stunning. I love it. Um, I think it is the best from the brand. I also like Pardon, but Pardon, um, you know, me and Pardon have this relationship where, uh, I love it and hate it because I like the composition because it reminds me very much of, um, L'Instant de Guerlain Eau Extreme, which I have two bottles of it. I love, um, and you know, for a, for a fragrance like this, from a house like this, I just demand a little bit more, you know what I mean? Um, and so... This is, I think, their best fragrance, in my opinion, Black Afghano. And this has a beautiful green cannabis note. Very hard note to do properly. Okay, now we're going to go to one of my new purchases. And I am very happy with this. Someone uh, in my comments, I can't remember who, scared the bejesus out of me because they said, Oh, you got the Eau de Cologne version. You should have got the Eau de Toilette. The Eau de Cologne is weak. It sucks. The Eau de Toilette's a masterpiece, and I went, oh shit, I didn't even know that, you know? Uh, but then I I wore it, uh, and I'm very satisfied. I don't know if maybe the one he smelled was off or what, but I think this is absolutely stunning. I think it lasts long, way more than I need it to. You know, we're talking uh, easily six to eight hours, and I can easily reapply this because it's a splash, and I decamp my splashes into sprayers and bring them with me during the day. And so this is from the house of Jean de Prez, and it's called Versailles Pour Homme. Now, this is the Eau de Cologne. The Eau de Toilette has like a silver cap instead of black, but the bottle's the same. Uh, beautiful bottle. The box matches it. And um, this is basically a... Um, so this is a fragrance that is very traditionally masculine. It came out in 1980. Came out the same year as Patou Porom, and there are little bits and pieces of um, a bunch of different fragrances in here, according to my nose. So you get some touches of Patou Porom because you get the pimento and the clary sage. That will remind you of Patou Porom. But the way that the leather and the moss, and in the mid, you get this stone pine um, patchouli combo. So it feels green, and that greenness mixes with the leather. And the fragrance that it reminds me of the most is Aramis Aramis, uh, which is one of my favorite fragrances from the 60s, and I think one of the best masculines of all time, actually. Um, and this gives me big Aramis vibes, but it kind of does its own thing. There's very, um, there's uh, very intelligently done uh, sh strokes in this fragrance. So you get little touches here and there. There's some floral bits, uh, there's some woody bits, there's even some fruity bits in here. It almost smells like you're getting these um, slight fruity nuances mixing with the leather, the labdanum, the styrax. For an eau de cologne, oh man, this is so good. So deep. 
Um, this is an absolute winner for me. Like I said, the commenter who left a comment scared me. And uh, then I actually got it in and smelled it and wore it to bed and went, oh, sh this is perfect for me. I don't know what that person's talking about. But um, so, yes, Jean de, Jean de Prez's Versailles Porom. As you know, I did an entire video on Bala Versailles, which is probably his most popular fragrance because um, Michael Jackson, that was Michael Jackson's signature scent. Okay. Next, we're going to go to an amouage, and most people don't think about this when you think about pine, uh, but there is a big pine note in here. Uh, the main note is obviously rose. It is Lyric Man. Sorry, I should be wiping these bottles down. Um, I'm not a very good steward of fingerprints on bottles. Um, so, this is Lyric Man, and Lyric Man is basically a couple things. It is lime. It's rose. A uh, touch of saffron, touch of musk, and pine in the base. And that pine frankincense combo in the base, of course, it's amouage. You have to have frankincense. Um, that pine frankincense combo in the base is very unique. And I think it kind of throws people off because it adds this freshness. You know, there's this freshness to this fragrance. Um, yeah, it's beautiful. Uh, Lyric Man. Most people don't think of it as a pine fragrance, but it 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 has a big pine note in the base. Okay, now we're gonna talk more about you know forest floor like smell. Seventies fragrances that have this animalic forest floor smell, almost like rotting leaves. Uh, the fragrance is from the house of Caron, and it's called Yatagan. Now Yatagan is uh, one of the best castorium fragrances ever made. There's a big castorium note in the base and it will put some people off if you are, um, if you're only used to smelling modern designers, you're not used to smelling vintages or animalic fragrances. Um, I've, I, now I've mentioned two of the best castorium fragrances of all time, in my opinion, Antaeus and um, Yatagan. And um, Yatagan has this, um, to me, it has this forest floor-like smell. This rotting leaf forest floor, leaves that have been left untouched for months, decaying underneath from the moisture. You know, let's say it's in a forest and, and trees don't allow the sunlight to come and dry that moisture out from underneath the leaves that have fallen. And then you get like this bed of pine needles. So imagine there's leaves um, that have kind of created this blanket, but there's also pine needles that have fallen and have begun to decay. And that's the smell that this um, gives me, uh, this, this forest floor-like vibe with patchouli, with some labdanum, with tons of oak moss, uh, with a leather base as well. Uh, you know, if you like traditionally masculine fragrances, this is a, um, a must-sniff. And I think it's still available. Value for money. Um, and, and apparently, from what I hear, that the new formula is quite good. I will have to put that on my list to, to look into. But rumor is that the new formula is, um, is, is quite good. Okay, next, we are going to go to uh, a fragrance that is in the same ballpark as um, Yatagan. Um, it came out a year or two after Yatagan. It's from the house of Capucci, and it's called Punjab. Now, Punjab is um, a woody, spicy fragrance with um, very sharp, you know, green artemisia marjoram in the opening, but it, it, it begins to dry to that very familiar leather, pine, forest floor vibe I was telling you about with, um, with Yatagan. This uses some notes Yatagan does not. So, for example, there's things like myrrh in here. It becomes a little bit more uh, resinous. Uh, the cinnamon in this fragrance is much more amped up, and that cinnamon adds a different um, structure, a different feel when you wear it than Yatagan. Love them both, but they both fall into that same 70s masculine uh, ballpark to me uh, in structure. Okay, next we're going to go to Montana. And this is going to be Montana Parfum Dome, okay? Montana Parfum Dome, their, their best fragrance. Um, there is the bottom of my bottle. 
And um, so this is woody. It's spicy. It's got um, classically masculine lavender. The vintage, which this is, is much more harsh green, okay? So if you get some one of the newer formulations, I think it's apparently discontinued now in, in general. But if you get one of the newer versions, um, the newer version is going to smell much less, um, you know, harsh green. It, it, they've almost removed some of that, uh, you know, traditional masculine green vibe to the, to the fragrance. Um, and this has this tarragon, which I love, with aldehydes and lavender opening, and it dries to this pine uh, floral leather scent. So there's frankincense and leather and woods in the base. Um, and the vintage is much more green. If you like your fragrances greener, go for the vintage. If you like it more ambery, labdanum, you know, vanilla, go for the newer version. Okay, now if you like that fragrance and you've never smelled um, one of the fragrances that it's most compared to, that came out at the in the end of the 80s, by the way, Havana, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Montana Parfum Dome came out in the end of the 80s. Uh, in 94, Aramis put out this, Havana. And Havana is um, a fragrance that is heavily inspired by Montana's Parfum Dome, I think. Well, what they've done is they've added some uh, unique touches. For example, they've added a beautiful tobacco. Um, and they've kept the green uh, feel. And instead of using just straight pine needles like um, Parfum Dome does, this uses balsam fir. And um, uh, it still has that leather base, if you will. But um, the addition of tobacco makes it feel almost like a different fragrance. You know, it's in the same ballpark. You can tell these two are cousins. Just like I said, Yatagan and Capuchi Punjab are cousins. They're from the same family tree. Um, if you like one, I'd recommend you try another. It's the reason I set this up this way in chronological order. Okay, next we're going to go to a... Another, we've got a couple Aramis fragrances back to back, actually. So we're going to go back to 1988. And this was released by a perfumer called Yves Tengai. And Yves Tengai, I have um, not been introduced to any of his uh, other work. Uh, I, I don't think he did much else. I think he was like a one, two, three perfume, you know, creator, and that's it. And um, this is called New West. Now... I put this fra I put buying this fragrance off for the longest time because I thought it was just an aquatic. It's not, okay? So if you are not a fan of just straight out and out aquatics, if you're not a fan of the way the 90s decade released aquatics, if you're not a fan of stuff like Aqua de Joe, which I'm not, um, then check, check this out. Because the reason this is unique is that it, it uses a traditional 80s masculine fragrance frame and kind of staples these marine aldehydic aquatic vibes on top of it. So underneath it all, yes, you can kind of get that blue marine feel, okay? But underneath it all, you get a traditional masculine, lavender, caraway, mugwort. Um, there's bay leaf and pine, which add this, you know, traditional masculine green touch underneath it all. But then you start, you know, you get the um, freshness, that C10 aldehyde or whatever they call it, that kind of smells like melon. It smells like it's in here. And you get leather and oak moss in the base. So it's a very interesting aquatic to me. If you like stuff like this, you can check out Mario Valentino's uh, Ocean Rain, which Edmund Rudnitska did a couple years after this. It's also kind of a, a aquatic with um, a, a very unique vibe going on. But uh, there are some aquatics that uh, are not just aquatics, and this is one of them. I really enjoyed this. Okay, next, uh, we're going to go back in time with Aramis. So I started with, with Havana in 94, New West in 88. Now we're going to go to Devon in 77. And um, this is a beautiful perfume, uh, Aramis's Devon. It was created by the great Bernard Schott. 
it's it's aldehydes like only he he uses aldehydes in um one of the most amazing unique and um you know dna specific and what i mean by that is the aldehydes that bernard shant uses smell like um only bernard shant's aldehydes do if that makes sense so i've never smelled a perfumer that uses aldehydes in such a way where it gives the fragrance a signature outside of like Chanel's fragrances obviously use aldehydes very well but him as a perfumer specifically uses aldehydes so well um, and they mix it here with mugwort and galbanum which will be the topic of a different video but the reason that this is in here is it has a mid of spicy carnation jasmine and stone pine needles with a base of oak moss, labdanum, leather, amber. It's absolutely beautiful. And, um, you know, if you like, um, <clears throat> if you like things like Alliage by Estee Lauder, if you like even number 19 by Chanel, I would urge you to try this. Really, really good. And, um, rumor is, and again, um, I always say if you can, go for the vintage. You know, I know it's a little bit more money. Um, if you can, go for the vintage. But if you cannot find a vintage or whatever it is, uh, rumor is that the new version of Devon is still very good. Okay, so apparently these Aramis fragrances in general have been kept in fantastic um, condition if you can find them. Okay, next we're going to go to the house of Jeffrey Bean. And uh, this is going to be Bowling Green. Bowling Green. Now, this is a vintage bottle. If you take a look at the bottom, you can see distributed by Jacques Cochran. Um, Jacqueline. Sorry, Jacqueline Cochran. There's a whole story behind her uh, that you can look up. But this came out in 87. It's green and fresh with um, juniper, basil, artemisia, with a heart of pine and cardamom and lavender. So it's spicy. It's very traditionally masculine. Um, and, um, there's also a, a, lots of oak moss and balsam firs, fur in the base. Um, so it's very green. It really does hold up to its name. I mean, if I rank these, which I don't, I mean, I did save, you know, one of my favorite, uh, pine fragrances for the end, but this isn't really a rank list, but if this was ranked based on that, um, you know, green touch. This could easily be very close to the top because it's be It's a beautiful fougere construction with green um, touches throughout. Stunning. Very classy. Extremely high class smelling. Okay, now this is one vintage fragrance where for whatever reason, I still see bottles floating around for very cheap, extremely cheap. Um, and this is a, a house called Victor. And the fragrance is called Wall Street. And I love the presentation. It's so 80s. Um, you can see right there the 80%. Sorry, 80 degrees, which is before they used to do it with 80%. And um, this has beautiful green touches. And it has beautiful um, leather touches as well. And so uh, you get things like um, bergamot opening. Artemisia, Juniper, very traditional 80s masculine, but what I like about this is it almost smells like, you know, it smells like you're smelling a beautiful 80s boardroom. It smells like the, um, the, the uh, you know, expensive, like, wood desk of an executive, but with these amazing green touches. There's pine needles in here, there's a green notes, um, there's Artemisia, like I mentioned, and then there's balsam fir in the base. So you get green in all stages. The top with the artemisia and basil. The, the mid with the pine needles. Uh, and the base with the balsam fir and oak moss. And of course, the leather in the base is just a, it's just a love for me. I love these type of fragrances. And the price is uh, very good. Extremely good price on, on Wall Street still. If you can you can find a bottle for... I, I see bottles floating around for cheap. Okay, next we're going to go to the House of Rochas. And this is Rochas Globe. Now, this is one that doesn't get much talk. This is spicy and woody. Has tarragon in the opening. It's one of my favorite notes. It has this amazing um, 
spicy carnation with geranium, balsam fir in the mid, um, lily of the valley, and then a dry down of labdanum, leather, patchouli, musk, and woods with vetiver. Beautiful um, masculine. It came out in 1990. And so right before the switch to the, you know, when that blue tidal wave came and kind of washed everything away. Okay, next we're going to go to the house of Abussin, and this is Abussin Om. Now, Anuj from Enchante, who is one of my biggest sources for um, vintage fragrances, mentioned that this is getting a lot of play lately. Um, I think because Balenciaga Pour Om can't be found. This came out a couple years after Balenciaga Pour Om. It's a little bit greener, okay? So when you spray this for the first couple hours, maybe even three hours, you won't see the connection to Balenciaga Pour Om. But if you let it dry down, there's something about the way that the patchouli um, and the uh, cinnamon, you know, kind of blends together here to give that Balenciaga Pour Om feel in the dry down. Uh, but you get a greener experience here, almost like the bottle. See how the bottle's green? That's what you get um, with this versus Balenciaga Pour Homme. There's fur, uh, there's balsam fur here, and um, these beautiful green touches, you know. Um, I, I think this is a fragrance that you could see the price rise on. It's not gonna go to Balenciaga Pour Homme levels because not many people know about it, but uh, it is a fragrance from 92, it is discontinued. Used to be cheap as chips, prices are starting to rise, so that might be one to look into. Sorry. Okay, next we're gonna go to a house that also doesn't get much talk, and this is a house called Enrico Coveri, and this is called Enrico Coveri Porom. Now, um, this is discontinued, but you can still find bottles floating around. Um, and so Enrico Coveri, this is a traditional spicy fougere with things like lavender, citruses in the top, basil, tarragon, patchouli, vanilla in the base, all that good stuff. Um, and the reason this is on the list is there is a, a beautiful note of pine in the mid. And so if you take a look at the bottle with that dark green, that'll kind of give you an idea of that green pine note that comes up in the in the mid. It's absolutely beautiful. And um, if you're a fan of traditional masculine fougeres, that came out in 83, worth a sniff for sure. Okay, next uh, we are going to go to a creed. And we're gonna go to a creed that um, doesn't show a pine note. Uh, in the note breakdown, but to this nose, I think there is some pine. So there is uh, notes listed like basil, cumin, melon. This is an aquatic. It's it's called Aralfa. It came out in 92. Pierre Bourdon did this, apparently. Although in the Ghost Perfumer book, he said he couldn't remember which brief he submitted this to that loss that ended up giving Creed the uh, submission. Because what happened would be when Pierre Bourdon would make a fragrance, he would submit it to the other brands, and if it lost a brief for, you know, whoever, um, uh, Davidoff or, uh, YSL or whatever it is, he would just, and he would just give the brief to Olivier Creed because, um, well, long story, you'd have to read the book, but, uh, he said he couldn't remember which one this one lost to. Some of them he could remember, you know, whether it was Sagamore that he lost the brief to or whatever it was. This one he couldn't remember exactly that he lost the brief, just that he made it. And um, it's, um, it's, it's like this peppery, this is another one where yes, there's aquatic touches, but I like it because there's other things going on. Like I said, there's cumin. So that cumin melon combo thing in the opening is very interesting. And, and uh, it reminds me of the weird, um, you know, Mario Valentino's Ocean Rain has this um, decaying ocean-like vibe, you know. You know, the ocean's a big place and it's dirty, things die inside of it, stuff like that. And it has that um, feel to it. It's a very unique fragrance, right? And this has touches of that to me. Someone said that this smells clean to them. I don't get clean from this. I get this um, green, floral, dirty aquatic fragrance and maybe it's been reformulated maybe the new versions not the old 120 mil bottles 
have lost some of the um, more daring touches, have lost the cumin in the opening. Um, you know, but uh, to to me, I get I get a lot of that. I get a lot of cumin. I get a lot of um, I get pine from this. Even though there's no pine note listed, it feels like there's pine in here, and it feels like these two are cousins. Believe it or not, to me, New West and Arolfa feel a little bit like cousins. And um, yes, a good fragrance. I really enjoy this in the high high heat. And I even like this more than Millicene Imperial. So there you have it. Okay, next we're going to go to the house, well, the celebrity house of Luciano Pavarotti from 1994. And you might be asking yourself, Luciano Pavarotti from 94, isn't this a honey fragrance with leather? Russian leather? Smoky birch Russian leather? Yes, yes it is. But there is an ivy note in the top. So I decided to include it because that ivy note while it's not going to feel exactly like pine, ivy is a um, note that you don't see very often. It's it's um, it's a very unique green note. So I figured I would include this because this is a, I mean, uh, this has something for everything. It has the leather and honey that I love. It has the floral pieces that other people love. It has the spicy bits. There's clove in here. It has resinous touches. There's a Poppinax and Tonka and vanilla and amber. And it even has, you know, citruses and, and neroli and pettigran. I think this is one of the best celebrity fragrances ever made, if not the best. And in fact, to me, Luciano Pavarotti from 1994 feels like Moss Brex from Tom Ford, which is now selling for one to two thousand dollars. And that's if you can find a bottle because it's been long discontinued. And um, I think this shares similarities with Moss Breck. So um, if you can find this, this is worth grabbing. It's a great fragrance. Don't let the cheaper price tag fool you. Okay, next we're gonna go to uh, a house that, or a fragrance that does have a balsam fir note in it. And this is Romeo Jiggly Per Uomo. Now this is another discontinued fragrance. This one's spicy, woody. One of my favorite things about this fragrance is the way that the interplay between the um, um, fruity plum, Brazilian rosewood, traditional lavender, and cinnamon works. The cinnamon in this is very unique, and it blends with the um, resinous vanilla. You know, there's styrax, which can almost seem like a waxy vanilla smell. And, but the mid has the balsam fir, the green touch with the floral, um, carnation, rose, honey, ginger. This is an Alberto Morias from 91. This goes to show that Alberto Morias used to put out very complex fragrances. His fragrances are not all simple and easy. You know what I mean? Like he's known for kind of boring, simple compositions now. But back in the day, he used to do some pretty complex stuff. So, um, Romeo Jiggly Per Uomo. Okay, now this is uh, from the late, great uh, Rosen, Rosendu Metu. Uh, and Marcel Carls also worked on this. This is from the house of Puige. And this is called Agua Brava. Eau de Cologne. Um, and so, I think now, uh, it might still be an Eau de Cologne, but the new bottle looks different than this. Um, so this is spicy, woody, very traditional masculine, beautiful lavender, um, and, uh, sandalwood in this fragrance with a base of leather and, and moss and stuff like that. It has a mid of bay leaf and pine, and that's what gives it this very green, uh, touch. And, um, you know, if you're into these traditional, uh, eau de colognes, um, well, I wouldn't even say that. If you're if you're into uh, these traditional masculines, um, this is one to put on the list. It came out in the late '60s. It's been around for a very long time, uh, and gets overlooked mostly because right now a bottle of this is like ten dollars or something extremely cheap. I went for the vintage uh, because the vintage is um, going to have more of the higher quality ingredients. I think the House of Puig has kind of really. Um, you know, anytime you sell a fragrance for 10 or 15 bucks, or well, that's what it is at discounters. Let's say it's 30 or 40 retail. They're going to have to 
reformulate, cut back on some of the ingredients and stuff like that. But check this one out. I'll do a um, I'll do a video on this very soon. Okay, now this is another one where I am just trusting my nose because there's no notes listed on this anywhere. I can't get a note tree, uh, but it's an amazing perfume. It's from the house of Bali, Bali of Switzerland, and it's called Bali Masculine. Now, Bali Masculine um, is a, again, fragrance with no notes, but it feels to me, it opens up almost smelling like you're going to smell a um, leather fragrance. It almost, it almost opens like you're going to smell a leather, like a fougere with a leather base. You know, if you, if you think about something like Smalto, Smalto Porom, where it has leather in the base, smoky oak moss, stuff like that in the base, but it's a fougere construction, that will get you in the ballpark of Bally Masculine. And that fougere construction, just like Enrico Coveri, you know, these two could be close, um... They're not brother sister, but they're they're both in that fougere construction, if you will. Uh, and I think there's a note of pine in here, just like there's a note of pine and Enrico Coveri, the fougere construction. It reminds me a little bit of that, but I feel like the leather is much more amped up here. It almost feels like there's a beautiful leather in the base, um, very similar to the way Francesco Smalto um, Porom has has that leather but uh this almost feels like maybe there's little touches of resins in the base too i really like this fragrance i'm a big fan it's very classy uh very masculine and i can guarantee you no one is um wearing bally masculine around you you'll smell very unique okay so now we're going to go to the house of ormond jane and the reason that ormond jane is in the list is in the heart there is a hemlock fir um, note, which is a very unique note. Um, and there is a, um, sorry, that's not the unique note. The unique note that I was thinking of is there is a, um, yeah, black, there's a black hemlock note in here. Not hemlock fir, sorry, black hemlock. Um, which I think they used to use to create poison back in the day. I can't remember, but um, this does have this spicy, um, woody um, feel to it. And so I decided to include it because it has that black hemlock, um, that black hemlock note, which does feel a little bit green. There's also some, um, uh, some coriander and some uh, vetiver in here as well. Okay, next, we're going to go to the house of Amouage. And this fragrance, again, if this was ranked, this could easily be one of my favorite green fragrances. And this is Beach Hut Man. So again, if you're keeping uh, score, or if you're putting an asterisk next to the very green fragrances, uh, this would be one to put an asterisk next to. It is absolutely stunning. Uh, Beach Hut Man... Um, has so much going on, but the reason that I decided to include it in here uh, is because it has a note of ivy. So, uh, this is one of the other rare fragrances like Pavarotti that uses this ivy accord. Uh, it's very unique. And um, this is very different from Pavarotti, obviously. This is green, green, green. You get lots of mint and galbanum in the opening, and then you get lots of moss and ivy, uh, and it is just, don't think beach hut on the ocean, think beach hut in the middle of a jungle, you know, covered with ivy vines, that's the feel. Think about this beach hut that you're looking at outlined on the front, but in a jungle, and it's beautiful. Uh, if you're a fan of green perfumes, beach hut man is a must sniff. Okay, now, uh, this is another, um, this is another very green take from the House of Imaginary Authors, and this one's called Cape Heartache. Okay, now, Cape Heartache is um, a unique fragrance from Josh Meyer. You can see right there, this has Douglas fir and pine uh, and western hemlock. Lots of green notes. What makes this so unique um, 
is number one, there is what they call a big strawberry accord. That's the way that they put it, big strawberry. Uh, and it is big. It reminds me, I used to have this um, pencil carrier when I was a kid. Very small, like kindergarten, first grade, second grade stuff. And the pencil carrier had these stickers on it. And you could scratch the sticker and it would smell, right? And one of them was a strawberry. And the strawberry in this smells exactly like that pencil carrier. It's very weird, but I really enjoy it because it's a strange childhood memory. Uh, but that forest like a chord that Josh Meyer built, um, there's pine resins, Douglas fir, western hemlock, very green, uh, very reminiscent of a, you know, um, if you like the forest accord in, you know, stuff like Filanagio, which is coming up later on, uh, this is a much more fruity version of that because of that strawberry note. It's a, it's a, it's a very strange, very strange, very artistic fragrance, but I like it. I like it exactly for that fact. Um, but again, if you're, if you are, uh, putting asterisks next to the really, um, uh, really green fragrances, this, this is one you can put an asterisk next to. So back to back. Okay, now we're going to start getting into some of the big guns, but first... Uh, we've got a Anique Minardo creation, and again, this is the third, I think this is the third and last Ivy fragrance, uh, and it's Lolita Lempica O Masculine. Okay, so O Masculine is, um, is a fragrance that uses anise, rum, violet, vanilla, tonka, cystus, labdanum. Those are the key notes, but there is also this absinthe note with Ivy. And so the absinthe anise, if you will, whatever you want to call that note, that anisic absinthe vibe mixed with the ivy gives it a very green opening, but it dries into a very dark gourmand-like scent uh, because of the rum, the vanilla, um, and the tonka and stuff like that. But, uh, you know, as far as hunting down those ivy fragrances, this is, this is one, believe it or not. Um, beautiful fragrance, discontinued, unfortunately, but great designer. Okay, now this is a new one that was sent to me, and this easily could maybe be on the top of the list if I knew it better. I don't. I've never even given it a full wear. I did wear it to bed once, and I was taken away. Um, this really knocked me off, off my chair. I loved it. It's a, it's a Josh Meyer and Samantha R uh, Ratter creation. And Josh Meyer owns uh, Imaginary Authors, but he worked on this brand as well. It's from the House of Dacen Fragrances. And the fragrance is called Winter Nights. So again, this could easily be top of the list. This has a beautiful forest campfire-like vibe. So you get this forest uh, smoky campfire, almost like you're, um, almost like you're sitting in a forest and the campfire is just dying out. You know, when you've got those embers, it's here. Uh, with cardamom, tea, lavender, and musk. Oh, easily could be uh, the top of the pine, you know, balsam fir, uh, cannabis fragrance uh, list that we're creating here. But I just don't know it well enough to put it, you know, to the top. But again, this is not a rank list. So if you're putting little asterisks by them. We're going to start to get to the big guns here in a little bit. Okay, now we've got two Hermes fragrances back to back. Uh, one is a Guy Robert, and it's called Equipage. And Equipage is on the list because it has this pine needle note in the mid. Um, it opens up very aldehydic, and um, uh, the opening of this is challenging for me. I'm not a fan of the opening. But I do like what it dries into. If you can stand the opening an hour or two, uh, it'll become much more settled and course correct. And um, you do get this pine, carnation, patchouli, dry down. Um, and, and it is beautiful, but it is very traditional, if you will. Guy Robert um, is, a, is a very, you know, his favorite fragrance was uh, L'Envent Arpege from the 1920s, 
and uh, you can tell he is really into the classical French fragrances, which I usually love. This one's a challenge for me. I'll have to wear it more. Um, and, um, you know, it does have that pine needle. No, it feels like you're outside. This fragrance really gives this outdoor vibe to me. Um, and ditto for the next Hermes, which is Rocobar. Now, Rocobar um, is a Jean-Claude Elena, Bernard Bourgeois, and Giles Romney, so a triple perfumer creation. Um, Rocobar is much more modern. This is much easier for me to wear, Rocobar, than Equipage is. Uh, I think I prefer Rocobar, actually. Um, and Rocobar has this horse stable like vibe. You know, Hermes is all about, um, Hermes is all about the, um, they're all about their leather goods. The, uh, they used to make saddles for high end, you know, horse riders and stuff like that. Um, and this actually came wrapped in a blanket and that blanket was supposed to represent the Hermes blanket that you could put over your horse if it got, um, if it got cold outside. And um, this is really spicy and woody, uh, but the reason it's here is because there's a fur note in the base. So there's a fur note, um, and, and that gives it a little green touch, so it, so it made the video. Um, but this also has a beautiful benzoin, vanilla, uh, this also has a cypress note. The cypress note here is very prominent. And so I'll do it. I'll do an entire video on cypress for you guys. Okay. Next, we're going to go to the house of Atatlib de Orange. And this is Tom of Finland. And Tom of Finland is mostly about aldehydes, lemon, birch, and suede. Those are the main notes. The suede and the vanilla. And the vanilla, sorry. Vanilla is also a main note. Um... There is some ambergris, there's some pepper, and there's some pine, which kind of act as secondary sources. So that pine, uh, if you like your leather to have green touches, this is one to check out. Now, this is an older bottle. I've never smelled the new stuff. And so if you, um, um, you know, if you get a new bottle, it's going to be a little bit of a roll of the dice because I can't vouch for it. But uh, I do like this. This is not my favorite. Uh, Antoine Lee leather creation. He's done other stuff, which I like more, but I, I do still enjoy this. Okay, now we've got another fragrance you wouldn't think has a has a pine note in it, but it does. Uh, and this is Obsession for Men. So Calvin Klein Obsession for Men came out in 86. One of my favorite ambery, you know, vanilla, uh, oriental, spicy fragrances. That's the highlight of the show, if you will. Um, lots of myrrh and amber and vanilla and stuff like that, but there is a pine note in, in here in the mid. See if you can pick it up next time you wear it. There's this green pine note that will come out after a couple hours. If you can get your nose to look past the cinnamon uh, and the resins and the spices, you'll, you'll pick it up. The pine and the sage kind of really stand out. There's also a red berry note in there, which is very strange. Uh, okay, next we're going to go to the house of Halston, and this is 112. Now, 112 is this mossy, you know, um, floral. This is a very floral masculine fragrance, a little bit barbershoppy, um, but it has a beautiful pine needle note in the mid, and so that's why it's here, is it's got that green, spicy green vibe, um, and uh, this is much less aggressive than its brother. Uh, Halston Z14 is much more aggressive. This is much more, um, you know, if you want to, if you have like a little bit of a reserved personality, then this is the one I would urge you to try. Apparently it's discontinued, shockingly discontinued, but um, one to, um, one to keep an eye on. Okay, next we're going to go to the House of Creed. And this is Royal Mayfair. Now, Royal Mayfair originally started its life known as Windsor. And this is a fragrance that, uh, again, if you're making an asterisk uh, next to some of my favorite pine, balsam fir, ivy, cannabis fragrances, this is one to make an uh, asterisk next to. Whether it's 
Royal Mayfair or Windsor. Windsor is very hard to find now. They're basically the same fragrance. Windsor feels a little bit more um, aged. It feels like they took Royal Mayfair and aged it in like a, you know, uh, a barrel, if you will, for 50 years and then let it out. Um, but the main notes of Royal Mayfair are gin, lime, and pine with rose, tuberose, eucalyptus, orange, and cedar. And that pine, rose, gin, eucalyptus combo is, um, is very strange at first. In fact, I hated this fragrance at first, but, uh, what it kind of evolves and turns into, and as your nose gets used to the fragrance, beautiful, absolutely beautiful fragrance. And, um, this went, this was on my fragrances I hate that now I love list. So Royal Mayfair, if you're, if you're into, you know, unique niche fragrances, that's one to sniff. And because not many people like it because it's so unique, you can find it discounted sometimes. Try to get the uh, 120 mil bottles if you can. You should be able to find these for 250, 300 bucks. Well, well worth that price. Absolutely well worth it. Don't pay uh, two or 300 for the 75 mils though. I think you can get a better deal than that. Okay, now one of my new additions and um, one of my favorite green resinous fragrances. Rich Mitch says this feels very oily on his skin and I know what he means. Uh, this is Tom Ford's Vert de Encens. Now this is discontinued, unfortunately. Um, Antoine Mason Du and Sh uh, Shayamala Mason Du, who were a husband wife team. I think they are since divorced, but I think they were married when they built this, um, made this along with Jan Vosnier. Uh, and this is uh, focused around frankincense, vert de encens, literally means green incense. But the green notes here are just as important because you've got fir balsam and uh, pine resin. And again, if you're making asterisks uh, next to the ones to really try to check out if you're interested in trying to get your nose on some of these green, piney fragrances, this is one to put an asterisk by. And... This is one of my favorite private blends, period. You know, along with Tuscan leather, uh, this is one of my favorites. I think this is uh, this is worthy of the Tom Ford private blend name. Okay, now we're going to go to a fragrance that uh, is known throughout the... Uh, if you know classic masculines, this is usually one that gets bun you know lumped in with the great classic masculines of the time. Uh, this is... Quorum by the house of Antonio Puig. So if you can find a bottle that says Antonio Puig, you know it's a vintage. The newer ones, I think, just say Puig. They don't say Antonio Puig. That's what you want to look for. My bottle actually won't spray anymore. So I have a problem. I have to figure out how to get the juice out. Um, but I'll, I'll, I mean, worst case scenario, I'll just knock the top out off and decant it. But, um, yeah, it won't spray anymore, unfortunately. So, uh, but it's spicy, it's, le it's leathery. Uh, there's oak moss and tobacco. Tobacco is a beautiful note here. There's no pine note listed, which is shocking to me because I get a big pine with cumin, patchouli, sandalwood, um, leather, but uh, I, so I included it even though there's no pine note listed. Okay, down to the last si five or six. Next, we've got uh, the house of Vial, Parfums Vial, and it's called Kipling. And Kipling is leathery, it's spicy. This has a beautiful, absolutely beautiful pine note in the uh, mid. Uh, and if you like the fougere type creations, uh, I mentioned Francesco Smalto Poron, right? Uh, with that fougere creation and the leather and the dry down. The reason I keep bringing that fragrance up is this has that leather, oak moss, but you know, classical fougere structure, but with green pine in the mid. It's absolutely beautiful. In fact, one of the subscribers, I really trust his nose, Manly Sense, said he would have put this in his top leather fragrances. And I know what he means. It didn't make my top 50. Uh, but it easily could have Kipling's uh, or uh, Kipling by the House of uh, Parfums Vial. Okay, next we're going to go to uh, Crezia 
And this is Crezia Uomo. So, Crezia Uomo, look at the bottle, very green. If you're familiar with One Man Show, this is a better One Man Show, to my nose. Uh, it is spicy, it's woody, um, it's got green artemisia and basil with aldehydes in the top, and you get a big pine needle dose in the heart. So the heart is florals and pine with leather and oak moss and vetiver in the dry down. Um, a green beast, very green, extremely green smelling. Not my favorite scent, to be honest with you. I don't like the one man show, although the vintage one man show is very good. Um, much better than the current one. I think they should have discontinued it if they couldn't recreate what one man show used to be. Uh, but I would go for this if you can find a bottle. Okay, next we're going to go to another all-time great green scent, and it's Sar from the house of Van Cleef and Arpels. Uh, this is also a fougere construction. It's also spicy and green uh, with lavender geranium. It's got that lavender geranium tonka classic fougere structure. One of the all-time great fougeres to my nose, and um, uh, it's got a beautiful pine note in the mid. That's why it's here with leather in the base, and a touch of castorium, I think. Just a touch. Um, very intelligently dosed. And um, big fan of that fragrance. I, I think that's a year round. I could wear that in summer even. It's absolutely beautiful. Okay, next is going to be Rochas Macassar. Now this is very hard to find in the vintage. I think this is like 20 years old. Um, there's the note listing if you're interested in trying to pause it and read it. But, um, yes, I mean, if you can find the original bottle with the long horizontal wood cap, get it. I'm, I've been hunting that for years. I can't find it. Uh, but this is woody and spicy. This has tarragon and pine in the top and uh, leather and um, castorium in the base. And this is like the Hulk. This is the green beast to me. I mean, look at the color of the juice. It could be dark, dark, dark. Uh, green. It has that feel to it. It has that uh, incredible Hulk vibe. Um, very green, very leathery, and beautiful. All right, last three. So we're going to do two Polo, two Ralph Lauren fragrances back to back, uh, just because they're, they're brother fragrances, basically. So I put them both here. The first is Polo Crest, and this is probably my least favorite of the two. Um, this is, uh, tarragon, rosemary, basil, pine, caraway. It smells a little bit more herbal than the next one that's going to be coming up. It came out in 91. You still get the leather and oak moss in the base. You still get the hit of pine, but I like what they did is they removed the tobacco and the tobacco pine combo is what made my love of the original, you know, be what it is. And so uh, I like Polo Crest. I don't love it. This next one is a pure love. If you know what's coming, you know this is one to put an asterisk next to. If you've never tried the Cosmere or Warner version of the original Polo Green, or it's just called Ralph Lauren Polo, technically. It's just called Polo Green in the community. Um, this is perfection for me. This is... Um, one of my favorite, if not my favorite, pine, green, spicy fragrances um, out there. A very similar construction to many of the pine fragrances that I've talked about. Uh, it's got basil and tarragon in the top with coriander, caraway, uh, carnation, geranium. But it's got pine in the um, heart with leather. And the base has the oak moss and the tobacco and the vetiver and the patchouli and stuff like that. And so even though this is similar to many of the, you know, uh, structures we've talked about, this is unique. It stands out to me. This is, um, this is something special to me. This is one of the best pine fragrances ever created. Look at the green bottle. Perfect representation of what you're getting. Um, and I would, I would say if you can find a Cosmere or Warner version, get it. Okay, last one, uh, and it is uh, one of the most amazing forced smells you'll ever smell, in my opinion. 
uh, Christopher Sheldrake masterpiece. This is Fila Nagil from the House of Serge Luton's. Uh, very hard to find now all of a sudden. Uh, it is stone pine needles with bay leaf or laurels, if you will. Frankincense, so it has that smoke. Uh, it's got vetiver and spices. It feels like you've kind of stuck your hand in a resinous pine tree. And you get that sap all over you, you know. And uh, you take that resinous sap and uh, you kind of pull your hand away and you can smell the sap on your hands. You look up in the sky and you see you're in a, a forest. You see some smoke in the background, you know, far away, but you can still kind of smell it. And it mixes uh, with the resinous pine from the air. Uh, and somehow Christopher Sheldrake even captured what the, the blue sky, the freshness of the air feels like, like on a crisp, cold day. It's just stunning. One of the best uh, pine, green, dark fragrances that I've ever smelled. So glad I have a bottle. You know, I wish I had two bottles, but hey, I'll take what I can get. I mean, it's that good. So um, yes, this is my, I'm just going to call it my pine, stone pine, cannabis, hemlock fir, balsam fir, um, ivy, you know, green fragrance. I didn't just want to call it green because I plan on doing a second video uh, highlighting galbanum and artemisia and stuff like that. But um, yes, if you have pine uh, or, you know, balsam fir or cannabis or ivy fragrances that you love, do leave it in the comments. I'd love to learn more about what your favorites are. If you have fragrance from the one that I've talked about, leave it in the comments. I love seeing your faces below. Thank you for watching another episode of This Is Not A Top 10. Likes, subscriptions are always appreciated. Uh, we did hit 1,800 subscribers, so I am happy about that. Although, you know, to me, the subscriber count is not as important. I'm just glad we're moving in the right direction. Uh, so thank you for watching, everyone. Cheers, and I'll see you again tomorrow with another video. Bye, guys.